Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome to another delicious, intimate, and heart opening, maybe even a little edgy, we shall see, where we get to episode of Intimate Conversations with a beautiful new sister friend of mine who has the same name as my actual sister, Adele. Oh, fun. <laughs> yeah. So it was Alana and Adele growing up. So here we are, Adele. <laughs> but this is Adele. And how do we say it? Sprag Sprag on? Am I Sprag on. Rhymes with Sprag dragon. Sprag perfect. Perfect. And let me tell you, everybody, a little about her. Uh, give you her website so you can follow along should you desire. And uh, and then we'll also make sure we give you a, a free, some free material that she'd like you to 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 take this to the next level should it really resonate with you because Adele, she's amazing. She's an award-winning author and a thought leader. She's an international speaker and trainer. And in 2020, she's been awarded the Woman of Inspiration, recognized as uh, the top behavioral expert of the year. Holy goodness. Her book, Shift, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment has won three awards and is sweeping the globe, transforming how people are setting and achieving their goals. And after decades of, of feeling stuck in patterns of procrastination, we know that, right, listeners? Avoidance and quitting. So this, this touches all of us, Adele, thank you. Which really had, um, she's here to help us really live our fullest life and our fullest potential. And she's set out on a journey and to discover and, and learn how to do this for herself and teach us today. Um, and she really understands why personal and professional methodology she was following just didn't work for her and maybe they're not working for you. And so the result was what we were talking about here, a four step repatterning technique, which she uh, delivers through a membership portal called Pattern Maker Hub. And today she supports thousands of people all over this beautiful globe to achieve extraordinary levels of happiness and peace of mind and prosperity and goal achievement and life fulfillment. And so Adele, thank you so much for being here because our listeners are very much driven, I believe, by knowing there's more to um, connection than they've been. Um, maybe they, they've got a girlfriend, boyfriend, maybe a wife, a husband, but even that they know there's more. And I also believe people that follow me understand there's more than just living from a good attitude in the mind, that there's a full embodiment of the, of the heart and the mind that really, so the feeling of rich fulfillment is there. Um, it's not just on a piece of paper, look everything I accomplished, but I'm still empty. Yeah. So there's a really a, a depth that I'm very excited to first learn what wasn't working and then what did, what started to shift so that it's, that it did start working. I'd love to know more about your story. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So, um, well, I should start by saying Alana that I've been in the personal development industry for over 30 years. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm getting old now. No, you're <laughs> hot, girl. So whatever, we need to ask you your youth pill <laughs> secret as well. <laughs> but yeah, so you've been at this for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And, and initially, you know, I was coaching. I was coaching at one of the major personal development um, industry leaders. And I was following all the instructions that we are taught to follow. And yeah. I'll, I'll just tell you what those instructions are. You will recognize them. It's like set a goal, then yeah. determine the steps that you want to get to get to that goal. Yeah. If you don't know how to take those steps or what steps to take, then get training. And if you still aren't taking those steps, even though you know how, there's something up with your mindset, change your mindset. Hmm. And if you still don't achieve, well, heck, there must be something wrong with you or the goal. So quit that goal, start again, try something new. And... Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. was doing that and teaching that. Yeah. And I was teaching people how to have an empowered mindset and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then about 10 years in, I started to look around and really speak to my participants. And I realized only about 25% of us are actually achieving. Yeah. Yeah. So I went, there's something not right. Like this, this can't be us. At this point, yeah. I was, I was at the point where there's no way I had followed everything commitment and pushing past the comfort zone and sure rebuilding confidence. So I, I started to say, okay, there's something else. There's something else up. So yeah. I took myself back to university. I, I went to study the human mind. Yep. I started at the age of 40. I graduated at 47. Look at you. <laughs> I've got shivers. That's amazing. Right on. <laughs> And I really wanted to dive in what's going on in this brain of ours that prevents yeah. everybody 
from achieving based on these instructions. Yes. And what I discovered, Alana, is that we've got our instructions all wrong. <laughs> We're yeah. doing it all backwards. Yeah. And so I started to really dive into how the brain is patterned. Okay. So our brain has neural pathways. Yeah. And it's those neural pathways that determine the actions we take and the behaviors yeah. we adopt and the beliefs we have. Yeah. And if we're going to take new be new actions, new behaviors, we yeah. need to start not with what do I need to do? Forget it. Let's start with why am I not doing that? Mm. Because the answer to that question will lead you to a brain pattern that is preventing the person from taking that step. Got and it. if we can remove that pattern. Yeah. Now the brain is in a position to create a new pattern, which actually takes the step. And so it's hugely effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I already love you lots and lots. Even <laughs> my sister's name now, I love you even more for more reasons. Okay. And the reason is, thank you so much for instead of making ourselves wrong and judging ourselves, that instead of, it's like, it's why am I not doing that? Now that's got to lead us into a feeling. Yes. Why am I not, right? Exactly. So the brain pattern creates something that goes, ah, and I don't want to do it, right? Yeah. So, so there's three parts to a pattern, a pattern, right. the definition of a pattern is yeah. an intertwined physical sensation, yeah. emotion, yeah. and thought. It Thank is you. not just our mind that it is at play here. And that's really important to know. So that yes. fear that we feel yeah. or doubt or shame or anger or whatever is coming up for us when we think about taking that step, that's an indication of a brain pattern that isn't working. Got and it. And if we can start from there and not yeah. make ourselves wrong, as you say, I mean, you know, let's face facts. We are swimming in a world of blame and shame. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. It's who do I, who, who can I blame? And if I can't find somebody to blame, it must be my fault. So then yeah. I'm, I'm forced to feel ashamed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. None of this is working out there in the world. Correct. So instead of that, we just ask, we ask a very simple question. Does it work? And does it work for everybody? Okay. The beautiful thing about brain patterns is if we, if the answer to that question is no. So, yeah. you know, you work a lot with relationships, right? Yeah. yeah. So here you are and, and let's, let's take somebody and they're in conflict with their spouse. Okay. They may feel, well, this works for me, but if it doesn't work for their spouse, then as a pattern, we have to say, well, it's not working. It's Correct. just not working. It doesn't matter whether the person's right or wrong. That makes no difference. Okay. okay. Knowing that something doesn't work, we get to say, okay, there is a pattern that is creating the conflict. Yeah. A pattern in our brain. And all we have to do is remove that pattern and then let the subconscious guide us to the optimal pattern. Ooh. Ooh, okay. now we get really juicy. Right? Good, this is good, because that's more about the seen than the unseen more than the seen. Exactly. We have yeah. to get to the unknown, not yeah. the known, right? Yeah. Because yeah. the yeah. question right, wrong is coming from the known. Correct. So when we can remove that pattern, and the beautiful thing about that is nobody needs a solution. <laughs> that's the thing that I love. In fact, if you think you know the solution, it's highly likely that you're going to create another problem. Thank you. Tell us why, because I get it. But yeah. Yes, because you don't yet have the pattern in your brain to come up with the right solution. So we can jump around problem solving, adding layers of problems on top of the other. Okay, I'm covered in shivers right now, Adele, because this is like rearranging the furniture. Yes. Right? Thinking that you're going to create some new house, but you're not. You're just rearranging the living room furniture. Exactly. Yeah, and the subconscious is where the solution is. Yes. And what we already know isn't working. So why would rearranging what's already not working somehow work? That's insanity. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Loving this. Yeah. You got it. You got it. So how do, how does the subconscious create brilliant solutions? And, I, and I'll tell you, every single listener out there has done this. Yeah. Have you ever been problem solving and you're like, yeah, I mean, even let's just go back to that conflict with your spouse, right? So you're oh, you know, we got to get counseling, we got to do this, we got to do that, we got to do that. And all that's great. And you start going down the path, and you're getting all these problem solving. And then you decide, okay, I'm done. I'm just gonna go to bed. I can't do this anymore. And yep. then in the 
in the dark recesses of that bedroom, somehow yeah. that solution just lands in yeah. your brain. And it takes care of everybody. It takes yeah. care of the kids. It takes care of the spouse. It takes care of you. It takes care of the problem. And it's just like, oh, where did that come from? Right? Right. When you relate to that as if it's esoteric or mystical. It isn't. It's the brain's way of functioning. When we can relax, let go of what we think the answer is or what we think we know, yeah. our brain goes to work to actually cause a solution that, that bubbles up from the unconscious. Yeah. So here's something that everybody needs to know. From the moment you have been born in the unconscious regions of your brain, you have been storing every single experience in life. Everything you've seen, touched, smelled, tasted, read, everything. Now, yeah. it's not in a format that we can tap in and say, what did I learn? Yeah. Two okay, it's not like that. Yeah. But it's there in experience. It's there yeah. in the mind, right? And yeah. when we can let go of what we think we know, that yeah. is where the brain goes to find the solution. Okay. Love you more. Just keep loving you more. Oh my God, we're only five <laughs> minutes into this and I'm already in love with you. Okay. So if I, I believe we're all one and I believe scientifically when I'm coherent with the field, I also have access to non-local intuition. So would you also say in the recesses is not just every experience I've ever had, but that we've all ever had? Oh, I love that question. Okay. Now we're going to really dive into the brain. Okay. <laughs> Because now it gets really juicy. All okay. right. Okay. You probably know, you may have heard that the brain is divided into two hemispheres, correct? Yes. Okay. Most people believe that the brain is, the left brain is logical, the right brain is creative. Okay. Throw that theory away. It's not true. Okay. okay. The latest findings in neuroscience show that the, what the hemispheres are doing not how they are doing it is the most, sorry, how they are doing it, not what they were doing is the most important thing. Okay? okay. Okay. So what is the difference between the hemispheres? Well, here we have this left hemisphere that is patterned. Okay. Mm -hmm. That and what that left hemisphere does is it takes all the stored information that you learned in your past. Yeah. And it drags it into your present moment. Okay. Yep. Yeah. But what the right hemisphere does is it's drinking in using broad, open, sustained awareness of everything in the current moment. Yeah. All right. So those are two very, very different needs that are occurring at exactly the same time. If you yeah. think about it, you know, like um, an excellent scientist who does research into this is Ian McGilchrist, if anybody is interested in the brain hemispheres and the latest okay. findings. Uh huh. He has an easy way to explain this. He says, imagine that you're a bird pecking on the ground and you're trying to sort the seed from the gravel. Okay. okay. Yeah. So in order to know that that is a piece of seed, you have to use knowledge of the past, right? Yeah. You have to yeah. learn seed and you have to learn gravel. Okay, great. And you have to focus in and know so that you're, you um, remove all the distractions around you in order to find seed and gravel. Okay. Okay. At the same time, you've got predators, prey, dangers all around you, opportunities, right? There might be a mate out there somewhere. So you've got all these opportunities and you yeah. have to maintain awareness of everything in your now, in your yeah. current moment in order to protect you. So yeah. how does nature take care of these two opposing needs that are arising yeah. simultaneously? Yes. Beautifully. She is brilliant. She just severed that brain in two. She said, great, right side, you take care of being connected to now, yep. left side, you take care of knowledge and using information you've stored from the past. Yes. Okay. All yeah. right. Brilliant. Let's get back to what you were saying. Do we have a connection to everybody inside our brain? Are we able to tap into more than just our own individual wisdom? Yeah. Well, Jill Bolte Taylor, who is another neuroscientist who had a stroke in her left brain. Ah, yeah. You yeah. Heard of her? Yeah, yeah. She, as she had that stroke, she realized that we are, in her words, energy beings connected to all other energy beings Shiver. in the yep. right hemisphere. Right? Yep, yep, yep. Uh huh. So 
what is that capacity in that brain mm -hmm. of ours? I mean, I, I just stand in awe of it and go, yeah. oh my gosh. And, and I teach a method for whole brain communication, whole brain thinking. What the, the repatterning technique I teach is actually removing the left brain's pattern, causing the left brain to have to tap to the right oh. to access the wisdom that exists in the moment and in everything that is stored inside of you so as to create a new pattern. So how it works is it goes left brain, right brain, back to left brain, but now you've got a pattern created today for now, which is brilliant, which takes care of everybody. Is this making wow. sense? I think so. So left, why is it left, right, left, as opposed to left, right, integrated altogether? Because you need a pattern in order to take action. Okay. Your brain, think about that, that right hemisphere connected to everything in your now, having yeah. no access to your past. Okay. If all you had was that hemisphere, yeah. you would be in the flow of now and inseparable from now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I hope I'm making sense. Yes. So you yes. are deeply connected and you are just energy being connected to all other energy beings, as Jill yes. says, right? Yes. So we need those patterns. It's not like the left brain is doing anything incorrect. The yes. problem is, is our overeducation of the left hemisphere has left us cut off from the right. So the left hemisphere, when it's a translator for what yeah. is going on in your now, it is able to translate effectively. Oh, you know, this is happening here today, right? Rather than relying on all of its past knowledge. Okay, so this, so if we're only in our right and we're connected to all and we're all one, all the rest of it, I almost feel like you could just sit and meditate and be like happy all day, but then you actually open the door and go talk to your mother-in-law and you lose your shit, right? You or got it. Or you get the text and that reminds you of your ex-husband or ex-girlfriend or whatever. So there is an emerging of the two of them into this, what you just call, what was it whole brain thinking you just said? Yes, whole brain thinking. So, so we want keep going because yeah i'm getting it why we need them to be to be embodied in action to get a result in your life sourcing it only from the left doesn't take into account all that's happening so it is a collaboration cooperation between these two back to exactly. the left and to a different pattern a different action am i getting it hey, you got it you got it exactly so okay. if all you had was the right hemisphere you would be unable to take action yeah. because you don't have patterns and you need a pattern in order to take an action okay yeah. Yeah. so it's really important that we rebuild this connection as you're right. saying because you're yeah. right i mean i i use i i'm a meditation facilitator i used to sit in meditation blissing out i mean yeah. it was just like oh this is awesome and and connecting to everything around me yeah. losing my boundary totally yeah in the right hemisphere totally. and then as you say i would come back and yell at the kids yeah right? thank you yeah okay this is so good okay so back to this part what did you say physical emotional and thought did i get that right yeah so there's a physical <laughs> sensation and emotion and a thought all combined intertwined yep is a pattern that's that's how we identify a pattern okay so i've been trained um accelerated evolution says image thought emotion body sensation all of these elements have to be represented to create lasting integration and change, not just think about it, not yeah. one of these elements. Okay, so we're saying totally the same thing. So what do you, okay, so explain more about when this new pattern is being mm, shifted. We go left, right, left. What do you do when the emotion comes up? What do you do when that uncomfortable trigger trauma, physical sensation, I think I'm gonna suffocate and die. It makes no sense. Is this a past life? Why am I acting like a crazy person when I'm not? but I am in this moment, like, like, what do we do with that big chunk of energy of emotion and body sensations that are going on? Yeah, awesome question. So I like to, when I work with participants, we work in two ways. So I'm going to, I'm going to say something and then I'll, I'll translate what I said. Okay. On the mat, off the mat. Okay. okay. So what do I mean by on the mat? On the mat, think of a wrestling mat. Yep. Patterns already running. Yep. You're already wrestling with it. It's yep. like, whoa, you know, how am I going to slow this train down? How am I going to pull back this beast? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Off the mat is when you're, okay, I have a pattern that yells at my kids. I'll use that example, right? Yeah. Okay. 
you imagine you use like you're saying that that vision that picture you imagine yourself doing that and then you notice how you feel in that moment when you think about that yeah. now let's look at these two different things right okay. you're on the mat you're actually in a conflict with your kids it's highly likely that you're feeling emotions such as anger rage right yeah. Okay, yeah. you're off the mat, you're sitting there and you're thinking about doing that with your kids, it's highly likely you're feeling different emotions, guilt, shame, disappointment. Yes. Well, okay, so, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So th it's still the same pattern. So okay. you can still work with it. But it's easier to work with these emotions than in that rage. It's already yeah. happening. It yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So we start here. Okay. And we just say, start okay, off mm -hmm. yeah, off the mat. And then we build up to being on the mat because eventually you'll be able to pull back a pattern and, and what we're going to do, and I'm going to tell you how it works. Okay. Think about a neural pathway in your brain. Yeah. And the information is running down that neural pathway. Yeah. Our job is to repattern it is just simply to tease it apart. Ah, okay. Yeah. As you tease it apart, the brain will not, nature abhors a void, right? It will immediately snap into another channel. And at that point, you will have a totally different perspective. Okay. In fact, ha, I'm going to say something, Alana. You're yeah. going to have a totally different identity oh. because you're no longer the person who runs mm -hmm. that pattern. Thank you. And share yeah. with them, I have my own point of view that uh, identities create these patterns, which create the emotional triggers and you can go through and I don't know heal integrate process all these emotional triggers but if you don't get to the root identity it just continues exactly yeah. so exactly. What, tell us more about um what you just said about identity so listeners understand even more yeah so if we can think of if you if you think about your brain being patterned in a particular way today okay yeah. that patterning delivers you a concept called identity thank you Okay. Yeah. Now let's just imagine that we could dip into that box. We could open up your skull, go <laughs> in there, just pull out a pattern and just drop it outside. Okay. okay? And then uh -huh. put another one in there, different one. Yes. Are you the same identity? No. No. You're a totally different person. Yeah. Right? So every time you change a pattern, you arise as a brand new identity each and every time. Okay. Yep. So in this way, mostly human beings think that we have to change our circumstances out there in order for us to change we're going the other way we're yeah, going to yeah. change in here and this is going to change out there right so we don't worry about that all we got to do is just change this this is so good yeah arise differently arise as a brand new person yep. oh and i got to give you another juicy tip eh? so you yep. arise as a, as a brand new person yep. and that brand new person takes different actions holds different behaviors moves differently yeah yeah they'll have a whole new life a whole new life trajectory is possible yes absolutely i've always known i'm not going to name names but as i got into this i've been in it you look younger than me but what a guard like i've been into 20 years personally <laughs> okay <laughs> and at the beginning i always had this aversion to this the old pattern you said the goal the steps the training the mindset the all the rest of it i knew it was bankrupt and i knew it was inside out not outside in yes. and as i followed my workshops and getting different certifications i've learned i've learned various things so i'm so pleased we're so on the same page here to remind people uh and to give them like compassion that if you've been trying to change circumstances and trying to have just a better mindset or all the rest of it that you're not stupid you're not broken you're not wrong it's just that we've been taught backwards and the effective science brain um way is this inside out and i'd, I'd like us to continue with learning this new way and let's um because a lot of people have had some ex when it comes to relationships intimate relationships some sense of betrayal yep rejection yeah. violation uh with a, a being cheated on being abandoned like, like some there's something going on there that i would say is a similar flavor uh pattern with when the relationships happen like all they didn't all they did was talk to somebody all yeah. they did was text or not text all they did was something seemingly un uh not this huge thing but it elicits oh my god 
Yes. You know, something really intense that gets in the way of being able to communicate, stay present, keep your heart open, all, all the different ways that um, allows for lasting intimacy. So Absolutely. if you could continue to explain this to us with the idea of like, oh my God, the pattern is betrayal and I freak out. Yeah. Well, if I, if you don't mind me getting really vulnerable, I can share my own history. Oh, I'd love that, Adele. Thank I think you. it would be very helpful for people who are struggling with things like that. Yeah. So when I was a very young girl, 12, 13, I, I got involved with an older guy okay. and it was very, very abusive as many women have faced. Yeah. Um, and I was left, so we stayed together for four years. So I think I left him around the age of 15 or something. Okay. But I was left with this pattern of deep existential shame around wow. it. Thank you. And how it would manifest is I would blush uncontrollably yeah. when anybody talked about sex. Whenever that conversation came up, I would just, whoosh, and it would start here, right? And build all the way up to my forehead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did 10 years of therapy. I did, oh my gosh, like, like you name it. I tried to get rid of this existential shame and it, it, it was always there. It was always this fear, right? And like you said, it would just hit me out of the blue. Somebody would yeah. say something and I would just, oh my gosh, here I go again. And I'd be trying to hide and all of this stuff. Yes. Anyway, when I first um, created this four step repatterning technique, I thought, all right. Uh, I, you know, it just seems so huge to me. It just, I just thought there's no way that I could repattern that. Mm -hmm. But I remember I, I took myself on a summer walk and it was late at night and I was walking the street and I thought, I'm just going to try. I'm just going to try and apply this technique and see what happens. Yes. And I chose one particular incident that had occurred that had left me feeling that shudder of shame that yes. just goes right through you, right? Yes, yes. And I thought, okay, Adele, you're just gonna use that because that's a strong trigger for you. So I felt the shame and I noticed where it is in the body and I kept repatterning it and I kept repatterning. And Alana, it, I, I, I still to this day cannot believe what happened. Wow. I felt the shift in my brain. I actually felt my brain go as if it took a step in another direction. Wow. And I burst out laughing <laughs> I could not stop I just was laughing and what had happened was I had this whole narrative in my head around who he was who I was what had happened you know this entire story it was like a there's a life plan that was just popped in my head and in that moment of repatterning it got completely rescripted wow. completely wow. and I remember funny moments that we had shared I remember him totally different I saw the fear in his eyes he was a young boy yeah and I didn't realize that because I had been so invested in the narrative given by my pattern that I couldn't see beyond that yeah and when I did I have never blushed since <laughs> Like because of that incident, I am actually a stronger person today because yeah. I went through that. And yeah. because of all the the battle that I did against that pattern, which didn't work, it wasn't effective, but still all of that going to work with it and playing with it and battling against it, it left me powerful. And as soon as I shifted that pattern, it was like, wow, all of that became available to me. Hmm. So you know, I always say to everybody, if you're going through something which is feels like it's just so bad, yeah. hang in there. <laughs> because once you repattern it, there is a gift under there that is invisible. Yes. As you're going through it. And then once you're through it, it's like, oh, wow, that's what I got from that. There's something available now. Mm. This is great because I agree that everything we go through is for growth is for a gift is for evolution and when we look only through the mind or the story and try to brainstorm the gift we might even come up with the right answer or a similar answer but it's not embodied you don't laugh you don't change your identity it's not lasting transformation or a new life trajectory so um 
first, I just want people to know, because you're probably like, okay, I'll, let me get a hold of this woman's stuff. So shift the letter f- or the number four steps.com. Again, shift the number four steps.com is where you can um, get the book, pay for shipping, get the book for free, pay for shipping and learn more about this. So I want everyone to understand this. Tell us um, in a Reader's Digest version. So you, you went back and you felt the shame. What did you do that didn't make you <laughs> go into trigger? Yeah. Yeah. And how did you not go on the mat and stay off the mat and get through to laughter? Yeah. So like I was saying that the, the four steps are incredibly designed because they work with the way the brain works. So yeah. when you initially start with the four steps, the first step is to identify the pattern. We yeah. need to know what's going on. Yeah. And that actually in itself is can be quite tricky because frankly the pattern has like it's like I said its own narrative right yeah. it, it yeah. has its own story that it has created yeah. and that's not necessarily the the right story it's just its story yeah so we start with identifying okay what am I feeling where am I feeling that and what is one thought that is going through my head and and park the narrative because that pattern that mind of ours it will just it Go will off. spin yeah so oh, you yeah. Were- you were walking feeling shame rising of uh that hot into your face what was what was the thought motherfucker like what was the thought I don't know (laughs) what what did you think well what I what, what I was using as the thought was a very personal and I'm sorry I won't share it but it was a very very personal shameful incident that he had I thought at the time that he had done to me so I was using that as the thought because that was the narrative. Yeah. 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 That was the thought. Okay. That was the thought at that time. Okay. So you're right. I'm watching this heat rise. I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm experiencing the shame all through me. I've yeah. got that thought going through my head. Now, step two, yeah. I've got to flip that switch. And Over this, to the right. No, no. Ooh. We flip it from that happened yeah. to I have a pattern that believes that happened okay i have a pattern that believes that happened yes so how we do that is we own it we say i created that now that doesn't come with blame and shame it comes actually with empowerment because if you can say okay yes it did happen i know that's what he did in my instant right yeah but i had a pattern that reacted in this way because that was my pattern now I've got, now I'm empowered. Yeah. If I've got to count on him to change, I'm, I'm always disempowered. You're always a victim. Yeah. I'm always a victim. So I had to flip that switch and just say, okay, there's a pattern in my brain that causing, caused my reaction. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I can own that. Right. So that's step two. You own it. It's a pattern. It's not out there. Now, now both of those occurred in the left brain. All of that is information driven by the past, right? Okay. Yes. And now we turn ourselves over to the right brain. Okay. So the next step is really important because here's where we get into the body and yeah. we are just going to surrender to the fact that that pattern lives in us and we are yeah. not going to look for solution and we're just going to be with the pattern just as it is without making it wrong just mm. observing it just mm. deeply deeply observing it mm. and then actually it's it's there in that right hemisphere that you get access to the big picture remember i was saying everything got rescripted yes it was because suddenly i had so much more awareness of what had actually happened in the now in that big huge space called experience that I didn't know from my left hemisphere. And yeah. that's why everything got rescripted because I tapped into that vast warehouse inside of me that had absorbed everything, the flicker of fear in his eye, the, the you know, the um, every action that he was doing, everything that was going through his mind, everything that was happening in my mind, everything that was happening in the situation, my right hemisphere had absorbed all of that. Yes, yes. And that's where it got rescripted from. Now that's power. Totally. Okay, so I'm following you. So we go to the right and we just be, we don't fix, we don't look for a blind spot. 
We don't look for a solution. We don't use the mind to don't. say, let me rescript this. Let me think positive about don't this. Cry. That is, oh, please don't do that. Every, <laughs> anybody. <laughs> yeah, right. So we just have to be. Now, this is not easy, Adele. Just no. be. No, Wait, it's there. the hardest thing. And right? so when I work with somebody, we start that. Yeah. 30 seconds. All we got to do is just just touch on it like a fly. We're just going to touch down and then touch yeah. off again. That's all yeah. you have to do. It's very gentle. Yes. And then we expand out and we expand out. So we don't start with those deep rooted hard patterns to work with. We start with simpler stuff and yeah. we just understand, oh, okay, that's how it's working. That's how I do that. And then when we start getting shifts in our life around easier things, then we can move to the more intense, difficult things. But you're absolutely right. It is not easy. It's yeah. simple, but simple, simple is but not easy. easy. Yeah, yeah. There's a thing that happened to me when I finally got that inner child work can be put back into that old mindset thing. Like you go in and, oh, little you. Okay, now chop, chop. We got to change. We got to be confident now. We got to be whatever. So you're not actually being with little you who's in there. You're in there to fix and change so that we can get the guy or get the yeah. money, or get the whatever. So it's not yeah. actually being with shit. So I remember the day when I was trying to do this, I was, had my little manipulation on and I'm like, okay, little Alana, good for you now, knock it off. So we can go off and <laughs> like go be successful. And then one day I just sat there, Adele, and I, and I had the experience of, I will love you in this dark cavern of my heart. If you're ashamed for eternity, I will never leave you and I will love you and I will be with you in the dark forever. I'm here. I'm just here. And there was a surrender of all that fixing and a letting go and a, um, a grace, I guess, a grace came over me. And I was like, oh, I think this is unconditional love. And everything got very quiet and very calm. And I'm like, oh, I think I'm onto something. So this step three of this okay. gentle just beingness does take practice because to to let go of the whole brain and your whole drive and my purpose on the planet. And I got to make a difference and all, and you just let it all go. And you just be. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I feel you and I love this. So, um, so what's step four? Yeah. So step four is a, a trust that your right brain, your unconscious is going to come up with that answer. And again, that is not easy because right. you've got to walk away from those four steps not knowing if you've accomplished anything and then you find out on the court so now wow. things start to shift around you and you go oh, that worked <laughs> right or that oh that didn't work i better go back to the four steps and start again so it's you so wait not, mm -hmm. yeah you're not trying to correct anything that is so key and oh. I mean, let, let's think about this from the perspective of how we are taught to deal with our problems. Yeah. Fix it, change it, correct it, right? Um, yeah. Can you, I'm, I'm sure your listener can hear this. Can you hear how that always makes who you are today wrong? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 now, yes. How can you change when you're avoiding who you are? Thank you. Right? Yeah. It, it just, it, it's so illogical when we yeah. think about it. And yet we're taught to just beat ourselves up in order to make change. And it, like you said, it's just totally ineffective. Yeah, yeah. And I want to also thank you in this moment, Adele, because I'll take, well, myself, and then now my clients through these processes, whether it's like in an online curriculum that I've recorded something, or whether it's like live or in, it's in a group. And it's just a matter of when the, the emotion, what did you say? body sensation, emotion, thought arises and just be with it long enough. And it can only take like three minutes on a call. It doesn't even need to take very long, but it's like, just be without fixing. Yes. Be without changing, be yeah. in allowance. You yeah. have to like it, just be in allowance. And there's a, like a grace that occurs. And generally a, a, a gem of wisdom is deposited or we just let it be. And then next week on the group call or something like, you won't believe what happened. I'm like, try me. Yes. Right? And then it's, and it's different. And this requires, I don't know right what the right word would be, but one point of view is it requires, as you said, trust. I call it question. surrender. Surrender, faith, faith that there's a larger um, field 
of intelligence that is listening, paying attention. Whoops, just oops. I think my ear, it just went right down my top, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's listening this whole time. Yeah. So, um, yes, but I also work with people who are, believe it or not, atheists or agnostic, and they don't right? recognize God. And yeah. That's a good too, because like I was saying, your right hemisphere is naturally connected to everything that is occurring around you. So yes. it can be seen as just simply the way your brain is wired. I and if you believe in God, great, like, yep. sure, that can support you, but that's definitely not necessary. Not I love this. It's global. It yeah. And past religion, past how you're raised, etc. It's just, this is something we can all give ourselves the gift for. Exactly. Of just trusting and letting go. Wow. Yeah. 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 And it's so powerful. Oh my goodness. I mean, I think that's the thing that that really needs to be driven home because like as I was saying initially, there is so much wisdom in every single person on this planet. Yeah. Wisdom which is untapped. Yeah. And if we can learn to just let go of what we think we know or everything that we believe we know and tap to the right and access that wisdom. Alana, I just sit there and think, what couldn't we do? Like, you know, what couldn't we solve if we can just get out of our way and and use wisdom instead of knowledge? Oh, this is so, so good. And the feeling of what that feels like to be able to trust within yourself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean the confidence and the yeah. self-empowerment and the love and the grace and the uh, the ability to know that you don't need a solution, that all you need to do is identify the problem and then let the problem go. That in itself is freeing. It's like, yeah. oh, great. I don't have to know what to do. All I've got to do is figure out what it is that I'm doing that's not working. Brilliant. And, and then mm -hmm. there's no suffering anymore, right? Because suffering, oh, you asked me something earlier and I said, oh, I got a juicy tidbit for you and I forgot to bring it up. Yeah. You asked me about those emotions. Those suffering emotions, they are all messengers given by your right brain, which is saying, knock, knock, you're yeah. running a pattern that is misaligned with the moment you're in. That's mm -hmm. all they are. Oh. And if we can see them like that, it's like, oh, great. I'm running a, a, an ink an unworkable pattern, a misaligned pattern. Fantastic. Thank you, body, for sharing that emotion so that I can upgrade that pattern. Yes. Oh, it's just like, I don't have to suffer anymore, ever. Oh. <laughs> right? And we get to stay connected to our body and not drink it to death or yes. drug it to death or have, like all the other things that we do to get it to stop talking to us. Yes. Or yeah. our emotions that yeah, I'm yeah. bad or wrong because I'm shameful or scared. We don't have to reject our bodies or our little use, our heart. Anything, anything, all... or each other. Like we don't have to reject any relationship because <sighs> if, if there's conflict in the relationship, then yes. I know that I'm suffering and I get to own that as my pattern and I get to remove it and then either two things happen, the relationship just very gently goes away, but without blame and shame. Yes, yes. Or it's healed. And either way, uh, both of us win. All right? Yeah, both of us are better. Yeah. Wow. So what, um, to bring it full circle back to your beautiful life, and where is your accent from? Is it? Oh, <laughs> I, it's a bit of a, it's a bit eclectic. <laughs> so I was born in England. Okay. I grew up in Venezuela, and oh. I now live in Canada. So okay. a bit of everything. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Where in, <laughs> Thank you. where in Canada do you live? I'm in Ontario. Ontario. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Good. I'm from the West Coast. Oh, nice. But yeah, just picking, trying to figure it out the whole time. And I couldn't do it. So <laughs> I thought I had it. Yeah. So, so in the, when, so when did you repattern what happened to you back when you were 12 to 15? When did that occur? Oh, oh, like, oh I've, I've only been repatterning for um, 10 years. Okay. Yeah. So it was one of the first ones that I worked on after I had, after I'd worked on a whole bunch of other stuff and I knew that it worked, then I went to work on that one. Uh -huh. So it was probably, I'm going to say eight years ago. 
Okay. Yeah. I'm curious if you'd be willing to share your relationship history pre repatterning, post repatterning in terms of, are you married or love life or love of your body or sexual freedom or any of that? Yeah. Yeah. I've been happily, beautifully married for 30 years. It's our 30 year anniversary oh, this that's August. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> yeah, awesome. He is the most patient man. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things that happened when I first started on this journey of personal empower or personal development, I should say. So back when we first got married 30 years, yes. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I didn't realize was that I, he was afraid I would outgrow him because I was mm -hmm. on this path. Sure. And sure. so I was always very careful about not to move too fast. Right. <laughs> and I think that's important if we have a spouse or somebody in our life that we really love is to be patient as, because they do change. Of course they do. Right. When we change but they may not be on the same path that we are. He has no interest in personal development. He does not repattern. It's it. He just likes his life as, as it is. Right. And so it's me who's on this growth journey and I want more and more and more. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always just, I'm very patient. I just, I, I just pull them back. I just feel myself waiting and, and okay, it's time to go again, you know, and then I'll mm. just find my subconscious will hold off for a little while. And then I'm off again on the next growth spurt. So yeah. I don't know if that's helpful to your listener. I don't know well, why I shared that. But no, anyway, but I, did. That's, that's, <laughs> I think that's actually quite common, Adele, that um, my partner isn't going to this workshop with me. My partner yeah. can't even talk about the new lingo of patterning with yeah. my partner. I think I need to ditch them and move on to somebody I met in my course, etc. What is it that allows your relationship to stay strong or grow or evolve over time if there isn't this alignment of, of personal growth? Yeah. Um, I always, uh, you know, that metaphor of the two trees yes. and, and they grow in each, neither one grows in the other one's shadow. They're both yes. shooting for the sun, right? Yes. Yes. I love that metaphor because it so speaks to what a healthy, truly healthy relationship can be. Yeah. Because I would never expect him to change for me. Totally. And I hope he would never hold me back for him. Yeah. And yeah. so in that way, we come together and we share beautiful conversations, just not about stuff that I have no interest in, or he has no interest in. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, we have, the, there's the relationship that moves between these two trees. And then yeah. there's the two trees that are on their own trajectory, their own growth path. Yeah. And that's fine. We'll, yeah. we'll meet in the middle. Thank you. That's so good. When I think about, um, you know, the partnering app that I'm starting, Heartmates, and become the one to find the one, to keep the one, thrive with the one. I see those Venn diagrams of two whole people and they enter, they don't totally collapse on each other. They they just have the part that overlaps, that that each of them can be more yeah, by yeah. being together. And I also like what you said about, well, if it's something he doesn't want to talk about, we don't talk about it. If it's something I don't want to talk about, we don't talk about it. The idea that the waves come in and the waves go out. Yes. And we don't have to do everything together or agree on everything. And there's a gift in saying, you know what? I'm going out with the girls. I'm going out with my homies. I'm doing my thing with the guys. And, and that sense that the waves go out. And then the waves come in where you do align and that you don't need to agree on everything. And if yes. you don't agree with somebody, it's not a problem. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I mean, you know, I, I do a lot with personal development, with meditation retreats, with I, I go off for five days every quarter in silence. Right? Wow. <laughs> if I ask somebody to join me in doing that, probably no. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's great. That's so great. So let's talk again and send listeners to shift the number four steps.com shift the number four steps.com. So tell us more when we go there, what we will find and what you'd like us to do. Yeah. So it's a very simple landing page and it just says you're here because you've heard me on a podcast or seen me speaking. Yeah. Um, here's your free gift. And there's two buttons. One is training. So if you want free training, there's video training there. And the other one is to order my book. And all I ask is that somebody pays for the shipping and I yeah. will send it out autographed. So make sure you put your name in there so I can 
sign it off to you and, then, <laughs> and you'll get it in the mail. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I love the alignment with what I know, what I teach. And I'm always a student. That's why I love my podcast so much. I'm always learning. I'm always willing to not know what I don't know. And what's so beautiful about this is that it's in the not knowing and the, the loving of that, the beauty of that, the richness of not knowing rather than I'm stupid. I should figure this out. Why I can't I just like, let that all go and see the, the jewel in the not knowing and allow it and trust for it to arise within us and knowing that we're all connected and letting it arise within us. And that if it does, quote unquote, doesn't, you just keep working the pattern until it does. Yeah. Be patient with yourself and not judge yourself. Um, this has been beautiful, Adele. Um, in conclusion, from your beautiful heart um, to the listeners, what would you like to complete with? What I would love, okay, here. What is the greatest gift you can give another person and yourself? The greatest gift is to allow them to show up brand new every time you see them. Mm. Just allow them to arise into the space, not expect who they're going to be, not know who they're going to be, and discover them anew each and every time. And if you can do that for each other and for yourself... Yes. Then you're living a life of pure joy. Yeah. And magic. And magic. Yes. yes. Yeah. And that this process you've taught us today supports us in being able to not come from the past or conclu conclusions. Yes. To really be in the moment. Yeah. Exactly. And present taking actions with them, dancing exactly. in the mystery. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. it. What a delight. I look forward to the opportunity to meet you in person one day when the friggin' borders open. And I can oh, go I'd love that. that. <laughs> I would love that. Where are you on the, on the West Coast? Um, right now, I'm actually in South Dakota. Oh, nice. Yeah, my, my wonderful man, Chris, has a place in South Dakota and Utah. So I was in California for about two decades after okay. uh, coming down from British Columbia. So, and now, yeah, this is where I am. So nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've never been there. So I look forward to coming and visiting. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, thank you so very much. Just stay, stay there. I'll have I will. a little goodbye um, once I press a uh, stop on the record button. So again, people shift the number four steps.com. So you can have either of these or both uh, go back and click both buttons if you'd like. And um, I'd really like to um, close with it's, it's the inside out and you've never done anything wrong. You're not wrong. It's a, it's a pattern that we've learned. I don't know if you believe in this lifetime or other lifetimes, it doesn't matter. And we have the ability to gently, lovingly um, shift these, come home to an even deeper sense of self and magic and wonder and awe of this beautiful life. And we can do so in partnerships. And whether your partner joins you in reading the book or not, um, you can still change your pattern. You are not the victim of anyone or anything or any circumstance ever. You have the ability to change all this with such grace and gentleness and surrender. And so we can let go of the suffering and the pushing and the trying and the beating ourselves up and just come home to who we truly are. And know that Adele and I, <laughs> my sister, I just love this. Um, we, both, uh, we both love you with all our hearts. Until next time on Intimate Conversations, all my love. <laughs>